Hi, my name is Brent Morris, and I am with Catholic Charities of Kansas City, St. Joseph. We do a, a session every week on financial literacy called Where Do I Start? Today's session is going to look at internet scams, and particularly COVID-19, and also stimulus check scams or, or tax return scams, and then a little bit of focus on senior-specific scams. So uh, thank you for joining us, and I'll be doing a... a PowerPoint and a voiceover on that. So let's see if we can get started on that. With our first slide, internet and COVID-19 scams. Watch out for scams, it says. And then of course, as I said before, our session is called, Where Do I Start? We started this back in August focusing on people who might have lost their jobs due to the pandemic or people who might have had a, an issue with reduced hours or or maybe their job was eliminated. So we talked about we have talked about since that time various topics and and those topics are found can be found on the Catholic Charities website as uh, the main website as well as our YouTube channel. And I would encourage folks if they want to go back and look at those we have several um, iterations. We have uh, lots of different stuff. We, we talk about credit ch checks. We talk about employment. We talk about housing. We talk about a lot of different things. Today's topic, scams, we've talked about in, in a general sense, but today we're going to focus on three different categories of scams that are out there. And the reason we think this is important for financial literacy is because if you have income or if you have any kind of money coming in to be literate to be smart about it is to keep it and to use it in the right way so again we're going to focus on three different types of scams today first scams specific to covid 19 second stimulus or check uh, tax refund scams and third i'm going to go a little fast here health scams specific to seniors things that are especially targeted at seniors. Now, before we go any further, COVID-19 scams are scams that are, are specific, as I said, to our current emergency with COVID-19. But the same techniques and the same process is used on different kinds of scams. When there wasn't COVID-19, people were still trying to separate you from your money, and they used some other thing. Maybe they talked about cancer, maybe they talked about uh, diabetes, whatever it was, there's some way to use that. It doesn't have to be a senior that has health scares, but COVID-19 is what's being used right now. Stimulus check and tax refund scams, any kind of large scale uh, money distribution, it could be uh, a large legal settlement that, that is a class action, involves a lot of people. Scammers will try and come after that money. It's even unemployment compensation is another way that people, another uh, avenue people try to use to, again, scam you out of your money. And then health scares and health scams, uh, especially for seniors. Again, I said seniors, but this is something that everybody needs to be involved in, in and aware of. All right, let's go ahead and get started then on COVID-19 scams. Fake coronavirus miracle cures. There have been, uh, we all know, if you can read this slide, there are fantastic advancements in COVID-19 and even vaccines developed, but there is no legitimate cure at this time. And even though the advertisements can be very convincing, they are just scams designed, designed to cheat you out of your money. Uh, one of the scams that is, is less prevalent now than it was early in the COVID-19 was the silver solution. There's there's various forms of it. Uh, Jim Baker, uh, who who has a show on a religious channel, was famous for trying to sell a silver solution. And when the Food and Drug, Food and Drug Administration started investigating it, they found that it wasn't effective. It didn't do anything to, to remove COVID from you. It didn't give any protection. It didn't cure people that had COVID. It was just a steak oil sales type thing as we might have thought of from previous generations. So be very careful of anyone who says they have fake cures. And not just, again, of COVID-19, I might say, 
someone who says they got a, a cure for arthritis, someone who says they have a cure for cancer, cure for diabetes. If they have all of these things, then then medical science would be interested in those, and and many many lives could be improved or saved. And it it doesn't make sense that they are the only ones who have figured it out, even though they sound very convincing, even though they sound logical. Take a step back and ask yourself if this really makes sense to you. And then if it does, ask somebody else if it makes sense to them too. Uh, before I go too much further, let me say too, I used to, in the previous um, work history, was as a probation and parole officer for 32 years. And so I've seen a lot of people who are very good at scamming, a lot of people who could convince you of almost anything with their with their words, with their gestures, with their uh, apparent sincerity, which it turned out was not sincere. So don't uh, don't feel bad if if you think, well, yeah, that kind of something I've gotten into before. Everybody can be fooled. Everybody can be tricked. We got That's why we have to help one another try and see where we are with things. All right. This next thing that that uh, is current right now is an offer to sell blood and saliva from COVID-19 survivors. Because if you survive COVID-19, then your body will produce antibodies and your blood will have those antibodies in it. And there is, of course, some scientific uh, fact behind the idea that if you then put those antibodies in yourself, you can help produce antibodies that would fight off COVID-19. The problem with this sort of um, solicitation is that no reputable company is selling blood from COVID-19 survivors and certainly not saliva. The scam usually uh, requires, of course, payment up front, and then the blood doesn't come at all. Or if you get blood, it may be tainted with disease. It might not even be human blood, et cetera, et cetera. It's never a good idea, just as a general rule, to put something in your body that is bought off the internet that hasn't been checked out, that you don't know for certain it contains what you think it contains. And I know, again, a lot of people on there that are these doing these scams, they they perfected it almost. It sounds good. It looks good. They might just have a website and all of it looks scientific. All of it looks good. Buyer beware. And, and the reason we're doing this is because it's it's 99 times out of 100, it's a way to separate you from your money. And I only leave that 1% um, cautionary tale because there might be somewhere down the line, but please, please understand, most of these are scams, all right? The next thing is that, that comes up with COVID-19 specifically is government-issued test or medical test or government-issued um, medicine, government-issued uh, devices that you can that you can use somehow. The government, if they are going to issue something, publishes it far and wide. It's publicized in advertisements. It comes out in the news. It's a big deal because the government's going to send something out. They want everyone to know. It comes out on TV. It comes out on radio. It comes in in uh, newspapers. It comes on the internet in the news, not as a, a website that advertises it not on a website that then will try to charge you for getting something from the government. This is one of those things we have to be very careful of because while the government does send information through the mail, the government does send information through the internet, it doesn't charge for things and it's not gonna be the primary way they try to get information out. So this, is, this has exploded with COVID-19, this sort of scam has exploded. But it's been around for a long time. Uh, I'm a diabetic, and so there's lots of stuff that comes out that purports to be a cure for diabetes, purports to be a, a way uh, discovered through just this and that to get rid of diabetes. And those are scams as well. And you, you may have been tempted by a, a website or by something you saw at the end of another article that you read, be very very wary of that sort of thing with COVID-19 yes but also with any of those kind of claims that come up all right 
Next thing we're going to talk about has been around forever, and it's donation scams. It's been around, as I said, for a long time, but it's really exploded with COVID-19 because COVID-19 produces and has produced legitimate need because of, of one of the things we talked about at the beginning of this session, people losing their jobs, people having their, their hours cut way back. There's a genuine need out there for people to get help from legitimate sources. Catholic charities that I work for that I said before, the sponsors of these uh, sessions, relies in large part on donations. And other many, many other so social service agencies rely on donations. And so donations are, are a vital uh, aspect of what we do. But there are lots of fake charities. How do you know the difference? A legitimate charity is going to be registered with the Better Business Bureau or the IRS, and you can uh, write this down or, or look it up on the internet, IRS Tax Exempt Organization Search website. The IRS will know about legitimate charities because someone who gives to a legitimate charity wants that to be tax deductible. And of course, the IRS has to keep track of that. So here's one of the, the uh, clues that someone may not be a legitimate donation site, and that is that they want your donation immediately. It has to happen today, and they don't want to give you a lot of information. If, you, if a legitimate source is soliciting donations, which of course they do, then they're okay with you waiting a week to give the donation. They're okay with you waiting a month and sending the donation. They're okay with you checking them out. And you saying, well, I want to call somebody first. That's not a problem because they're legitimate. And, and, and scrutiny is not, not an issue with them. If someone you're dealing with doesn't want that scrutiny, tries to make you feel guilty because you don't believe them, tries to make you feel guilty because you don't want to send your money right away, run away from that scam. Run away from that. Hang up the phone. Uh, disconnect on the, on the chat because that's more than likely a scam. You got to be very careful and don't be, don't be uh, fooled by thinking, well, you know, I know I'm a good judge of character on the phone. I know if someone's lying to me. I know, remember what I said before about having worked with people who were very good at, they perfected the art of fooling you, whether it's on the phone or by looking them in their eyes or just by, you know, I, I like the way people interact. Please don't go by that. Please go by whether or not you've checked someone out and they're legitimate or not. All right. We shift our, our uh, focus a little bit to stimulus check. And again, this could also be tax return. This could be unemployment. This could be uh, settlement that you've got somehow. Anything that, that brings money into your, your account or to your house, someone else is going to try and get. Now, when I talk about scammers, remember too, they could be scammers uh, sitting here you know, in, in Kansas City next to you. They could be in Los Angeles. They could be in Houston. They could be in Mexico. They could be in Russia. They could be in Australia, all around the world. Because of the internet, it's very easy now to, to say you're from a certain place, but not be. I love this picture of money just being taken through the internet. Because this is kind of what happens when people are cheated out of their money. It doesn't, we don't do this, obviously, uh, but it's a great picture of what happens. And if you really need this money, you really need this uh, to pay bills, to get ahead, please don't let someone just take it from you. Please listen to what we're talking about. On stimulus checks, there's lots of social media stuff out there that tries to fast talk people out of their money. What do I mean by that is, the government is never going to send you important correspondence over text or other social media, it should be media website. They're not going to say, hey, uh, you need to respond to me right away. This is something you got to do a, a X, Y, Z. They're going to have, if they're, if they're going to correspond with you, it will be done by email at a minimum or through the mail because every government, again, I worked for government for a long time, has to have some kind of backup that proves what they said. Uh, so you're never going to have the government just send you a text asking you for information. And they're never, ever going to ask for financial information to be sent to them or for other personal identifiers. So this is another way to know that, that this is a scam. 
Now, why do people get scammed? Because they, they're eager to get their money. Let's talk about that in our next slide. Scams that offer to speed up or deliver your money first are often accompanied by demand for your banking information. This is something I was talking about before. This illustrates it well. Here's the world, and then you see these computers all around the world. They're all linked, but they also may be scammers. Uh, someone might be from Canada and say to you, well, I live in Missouri, I live right there. You know, with Google Earth, you can look up anything and find out, well, yeah, you know, you live over there and you have a white house, and I think I saw a silver truck. Don't take that as like, hey, man, they must know who I am. They may have looked it up on the internet. So be careful, be careful. And, and as a general rule, it's never a good idea to give out your banking information to a person or company you've never dealt with before. Uh, they can take various forms, but it's all the same goal. Your banking information and your money, that's what it's after. So don't let the, your need, this is, this is what happens with scams, they prey on someone's need. Someone says, I really need my stimulus check right away. And, and as we all know, if you live in America, there's been a, a stimulus check came out in January of $600, and there's been a lot of talk of stimulus checks coming out again, either in March or April, for $1,400. And so stimulus scammers will, will say, hey, we'll, we'll upfront your money. Just send us your bank information. We'll, we'll put that money in ahead of time. That's a scam. No legitimate company is going to tell you they need your banking information. No legitimate company is going to say, hey, if you send us $500 now, we'll, we'll give you $700 later. That's never going to happen. So be very careful of that sort of thing. Most legitimate companies, uh, and we want to focus on, on that, are not going to, going to want you to give them stuff over the internet, they're gonna they're gonna want their protection of knowing that that uh, it was done above board. So be very careful of that sort of thing. The stimulus scams, the tax tax return scams, the um, some employment scams kind of fit in here too because they they ask you to send money or they they send you a check. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But if someone sends you a check, be very wary of it. In fact. Almost 100% of the time, that's a scam. All right, our next topic is senior scams. I'm sorry. Senior scams are designed specifically to target seniors. That is, we're defining that as people over the age of 65. That, that definition is somewhat elastic, of course, as uh, our population ages. People at 65 are still working and, and et cetera. But anyway, these scams rely on information overload or information embeds to deceive. Here's what I mean by that. They may say, here's a lot of information about our, our organization, and they just overload you with information, knowing that most seniors don't have the time or the patience to go through all that. Or embeds, they say, all the information is in what we send you, and yet they take a, a phrase and put it in a sentence. Two sentences later, they may have another phrase that applies. Three sentences later, another phrase, etc. So they've embedded all information on a legal uh, basis. They have put the information in, but it's all there to deceive. They rely on the fear of something bad happening if immediate action is not taken, or on a fear that great opportunity will be missed if some action is not taken. This fear idea is one one reason that seniors fall more victim to these scams to these particular kind of scams than other folks because they are are at a place in life where security and safety is is more difficult to achieve sometimes and is uh, is a more it takes on a greater importance in their head than maybe some other folks who are a little bit younger and so these scams also rely on family and we'll get into that more in a minute but those are some general guidelines of ways seniors are targeted. A one common scan, scam, and there's different forms of this, but it's all sort of around this, this framework. Uh, you get a fake check. Maybe they say that you won the lottery in Canada, or maybe they say you uh, got a, uh, an inheritance, or maybe they say you, you know, had a, 
uh, there's a class action lawsuit and here's your money. <clears throat> it's something that you didn't expect, you didn't you didn't apply for, and and you have somehow won the money. Well, most of the time, there's also an instruction to call or email for further processing or rules of how to access your winnings. And usually this involves you giving them your bank information, and it may involve even you sending them cash. If it's if the foreign, if the Canadian lottery was a famous name to these scams, then they want you to pay to convert or they have to open a bank account. You have to have so much money to open a bank account in Canada so that you can deposit money there, they can deposit your winnings. <clears throat> these are all scams. And you would say, well, this probably happens mostly in the East or on the East Coast or somewhere around Canada. No, these scams, these scams happen everywhere. Here in Kansas City, Missouri, several years ago, I'm very familiar with a man who worked at a finance company and had a, an, elderly, an elderly gentleman come in who was there to get a loan, a, a short-term loan for $2,000. Well, as part of the loan process, what is this for? Well, it's because I won the Canadian lottery and I have to send them $2,000 for them to send me $25,000. So fortunately, they called the police at that time and, and they were able to explain to him that that was not a genuine thing before he sent them any money. But for that one, one person who was saved from losing their money, who knows how many other folks are talked into it by someone who's very good at it, who, who may have, in fact, a script in front of him. And, and for every one person who hangs up, they just call another 10 people. So be very careful. Don't send money to anybody thinking that I got to send them this money to get more money. That doesn't make sense. And if, if something sounds wrong, you think that that sounds kind of too much. We're going to talk about that in a second. There probably is. All right, let's summarize. You really can't get something for nothing. Scammers count on the idea that we all want to get something for nothing. We'd all love to be in a situation where just out of the blue, all this money comes our way. But that's not really how things work in the real world. And we know that in the back of our mind, we know that. But what if, what if? And scammers, that's what they count on. And the second thing I just mentioned a second ago, something that's too good to be true is a great motto to remember. It became a motto, became a, a, a phrase, because it's so so often the case. <clears throat> if something is too good to be true, then that's exactly what it is. It's not true. It's false because, again, we check it out. You take do just a little bit of diligence, due diligence on your part, to find out it's not true. But we want to be cautious, not fearful. The scammers are counting on you being fearful in some instances and not cautious. Uh, another common scam, just real quickly, involves uh, grand grandparents and grandchildren. They'll target older folks and call and say, hey, do you have a grandson who goes to school in whatever town? 50 people might call and say, I don't have anybody like that. But they get somebody who says, yeah, I do have a grandson who goes to school there. And then they'll start talking about that person has been arrested. They were in an accident. You need to send us $500 right away to get him out of jail. You need to send us $500 so he doesn't go to jail. No, you can't talk to him. I mean, it's, it goes on and on. But eventually, people send money trying because they're afraid their, their relative is going to be arrested. Don't do that. Uh, and that's easy for me to say, don't do that. Be very aware of that sort of thing. Don't let your fear right then override your common sense. Common sense would tell you that the police are not going to call you and tell you that you need $500. That the that, uh, the legal system will take care of that in a process. And they're not going to call the grandmother, grandfather, immediately and say, hey, I need this money. They might even represent themselves as the grandchild. <coughs> but be very careful of that. Ask to talk to somebody else ask to get the number of the police station where you are and you'll call them back. And in many instances, that's enough. But just real quickly on that, make sure that they don't give you a number that you don't look up. That if they can give you any number, but make sure you've verified that's the number somewhere else. And then lastly, deal with companies and people you trust. If you're tempted to buy a product or invest or deal with someone uh, who solicits you on the internet or by mail, check it out first. And do not send 
send any money until you have confirmed their legitimacy. You are the one that, that either earned the money or you have the money in your account, and it, you have to be the best guardian of it. I can give you all this information. We can say, be careful, be careful, but ultimately you have to be careful. And if you are scammed, if you have been fooled, well, you're not alone. The reason these scammers prolifer proliferate is because it works. They, they're able to, to get a lot of people to give them money. But the way we can stop it, the way we can uh, push back is by prosecuting and is by coming forward and saying, here's what happened to me so that it doesn't happen to somebody else. So if you've been a victim of a scam, don't feel bad about it. Don't be embarrassed. They're very good. They, they work all day and, and, and uh, have been doing it for years in some cases. And they're organized. They're, these are not just fly-by-night things. It's organized people. <clears throat> so don't be embarrassed. Come forward and say, this is what happened to me. And maybe you can keep it from happening to somebody else. All right, here's my contact information. Again, I really appreciate you having watched through this and through the entire session. My name is Brent Morris. If you have an, a topic that you'd like to suggest we talk about, something that, that we need to go over, call me at this number or send me an email at this number and say, hey, I was watching your YouTube video and I, you know, I'd like to, to see something on uh, college funds or, or on uh, financial aid or just whatever it is that you're interested in, send me that topic and we'll see about getting a session on it. All right, I want to thank you again for your interest and your time, and we will end here as soon as I can figure out how. And uh, thank you very much for all you do. Thank you.